Hi everyone, it's Lauren. I hope you're all doing really well today. It's been a bit of an awful year all round for everyone on all fronts, hasn't it? Let's be honest. So I thought I'd come to you with a bit of a fun video today. If you're someone who has really missed our great British summer, if you've missed out on watching Wimbledon and eating strawberries and cream, if you haven't been able to get to the countryside or get to a park and missing a bit of that quintessential Englishness, then I have the video for you. And also, if you're not English, but you like that kind of culture, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what English people are really like, then I have loads of book recommendations for you today. Of course, there are lots of books in the world written by English authors about English people or set in England, but there's something about each of these books specifically which really scream out about our English eccentricities. And I think each of these books say something, either good or bad, about the way English people think and behave. So we'll start with Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss. I actually think all of Sarah Moss's writing somehow encapsulates that very English or British tone, um, something about her, her families, her characters that I really recognise, but Ghost Wall specifically is about the idea of Englishness. It's a very short novella, but she packs so much into it, and it's about a family where the father is obsessed with this idea of the traditional English people, the people that lived in the land before even the Romans invaded, and he forces the family to go to this Iron Age settlement reenactment, and his behaviour that doesn't necessarily seem that abusive to begin with um, gets stronger and stronger throughout the novel, and it's really a look at this idea of who gets to identify themselves as English and why there's this sort of mistrust, to put it mildly, of foreigners or foreign influence. The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro is a beautifully written book which has strong Downton Abbey vibes. If you like that kind of era of history, then this is definitely the one for you. This is written from the point of view of Stevens, who is a butler right at the end of the glory days of the English country house. He's telling you his story in the 50s and he's looking back on his life. He has spent his career trying to live up to the idealised image of the perfect butler. He is all about the stiff upper lip, suppressing your emotions and going around your, about your duties with dignity and decorum. And the way he speaks about his life to you is so English, it's almost it's so funny. I found it very funny seeing how almost caricatured um, his very traditional English sensibilities are, but he takes you through his story with so much grace, almost like he himself is a butler or the book is a butler taking you through um, with grace and dignity and then only towards the end of the book do you see inside his heart a little bit and by the end of it you're so it, it is quite emotional, I found, um, which is deceptive from the beginning of the book. In English Animals by Laura Kay, we meet Mirka, who's come to the UK from Slovakia and works, she originally assumes she's going to be working as an au pair for this very rich, often drunk, but not very cash rich um, English couple. But it then turns out that she's going to be helping um, the husband with his taxidermy. And the lines in her relationships with each of them are quite blurred. She gets caught up in their, their relationship. But at the same time, she gets to study the English as animals and study their culture almost um, as an outside observer. And she sees how careless they are, how hypocritical they are, especially when it comes to people like her, how people can be very nice to her face and within the same breath talk about all these excess Eastern Europeans coming into the country. Um, and it's a great book in and of itself. I love the story and how all these characters relate to each other, but in terms of the book as a study of Englishness and that those kind of characteristics that we have, by the end of it, Mirka is really creating these satires about English life via taxidermy um, and it's just very, very well done. Both of Joanna Cannon's books are excellent feel-good novels with a whole array of quintessentially English eccentric people. The first one, The Trouble with Goats and Sheep, is set in the big heat wave of 1976, I believe, yes. And it just shows how crazy English people get when they get a little bit of summer. When it gets too hot, people just go out of their minds. Um, and this is set down a specific cul-de-sac with um, a young girl as our, as our main protagonist trying to work out what's happened between some of the other adults on her street. She's trying to uncover a mystery. And it's a very funny look at how all of these people 
think about their neighbours and this certain type of people looking down on some people and looking up to others. They're kind of keeping up with the Joneses feel um, and how scandal kind of, kind of ripple through um, a suburban English community. And I really enjoyed this one. Three things about Elsie, however, I absolutely loved. This is quite a sentimental old book and it won't be everyone's cup of tea, but I absolutely adored it. This is about Florence who's in an old people's home when a new resident turns up and it's a man who she recognises from her past and so she thinks he's come to find her because he's tied up in some incident that happened when she was a lot younger, which she tells you about as the as the story goes on. But Florence is dealing with dementia, so she's a very unreliable narrator, but sometimes she knows she's not telling you something herself. Sometimes she's forgotten some facts and sometimes she keeps them to herself as well. Um, and it's quite a jumbled narrative which comes together very, very beautifully. And I just, I just love old people. I found out as I was putting this list together that a lot of these books, when I say all oh, these very English characters, a lot of them are old people. Um, so perhaps there's something about that, the kind of nans and grands of England that I find very endearing. But it's all about Battenberg cake as well, one of the most English things you can, you can get. And it's such a heartwarming story about the effect that we can have in other people's lives without really realising it, how far a small kindness can go and how small the world really is and yeah I just found it a really it really made me cry. NW by Zadie Smith follows four different Londoners who grew up on the same council estate and where they are in their lives now. The different sections of the book are written very differently because they really reflect the psyche of the character um, and it's a great look at the intersections of race and class in London. I feel like London and the characters you find in London come through really clearly in this book um, and I also loved how she plays around with the idea of what these characters were destined to become um, depending on where they grew up, what their race is. Um, if someone's from a council estate but they're white they're going to have a very different trajectory from someone who is black or mixed race and how how their lives are meant to go, how hard they have to work to get to certain levels in life, especially if you're coming from a working class background, where do you need to end up? Um, and I just, I really enjoyed it. There's one author in this list who I haven't actually read, but from what I've heard about her books, I felt like I couldn't make this video without including her, and that's Aisha Malik, particularly the This Green and Pleasant Land book, which came out recently, um, although I feel like her Sophia Khan books are very good as well from what I hear. This Green and Present Land is about a man whose mother dies and I think her dying wish is for him to build a mosque in his small, um, his small sleepy English rural village and he just has this kind of I guess crisis and it's like right I've got to do it I've got to build this mosque even though he's not been that religious himself um, throughout his life and it sounds hilarious like a cast of rural village characters who are very against this mosque. Um, I've not read it myself though so I cannot recommend it wholeheartedly, um, but I thought she certainly deserved a mention. I have one non-fiction on this list, and that is A Shepherd's Life by James Rebanks, and I haven't in general included non-fiction, but I think this one particularly tackles with this idea um, that the British are so linked to their countryside, the way we romanticise our own countryside, and we take it into our own personalities, like we all feel so much ownership over places like the Lake District. And this is a great look at what it's like growing up in one of those rural landscapes, um, specifically um, his village in the Lake District, and what it's like being a shepherd there, being one of the local people, and how the work is very hard, and there's not many opportunities outside farming within those communities. And that's interesting in general for me, because I go to the Lake District a lot, so I like to learn about a shepherd's life. Um, but it's also interesting seeing their relationships with the hordes of tourists that come into the Lake District, because a lot of the economy um, is supported by the tourism, and yet they have a very different relationship with the same landscape which is farmed by these local people. Um, and I thought it was very, very interesting the way he linked all of these different themes together. Queenie by Candace Carty Williams is a book that made me absolutely howl with laughter. Um, it's about a young woman living in London who's dating a stream of very questionable men after she's come out of a, of, of a pretty bad breakup. And also things that aren't going very well at work, um, things aren't going very well at home. Her life is kind of unravelling um, in that very, 
tragically funny way that happens in Bridesmaids, for example, um, where it's kind of everything in her life is going wrong, but she's not really accepting it. She's kind of laughing at herself, pretending it's all fine and it's all a bit of a big joke when really it's not fine at all and, um, and she's struggling quite a lot. Um, it's very funny. I loved her relationships with her friends. I thought this was a great representation of what it's like being a kind of young millennial, I suppose, in London. Um, it feels a lot more current than some of these other books that I've recommended, but still a very clear collection of these English London characters. Um, I thought everyone was so well realised. The Museum of You by Caris Bray is another one of those summer holiday novels, quite similar to The Trouble with Goats and Sheep. And you have a young girl here whose mother died quite soon after she was born. And there's a room with all of her things in that her dad has never gone through. And she decides to create a museum of her mum's things. And she curates it because she goes on a school trip to a museum. So she thinks, oh, that's what you do with old stuff. Um, but she's also spending time down her dad's allotment. She's being babysat by the deaf, slightly unhinged old woman next door. It's another one of those really heartwarming small community books. It's got a little bit of heartbreak in there. Um, but ultimately, it's, it's quite feel good. And finally, one of my favourite books of last year, I couldn't not include, Lanny by Max Porter. This, again, takes place in a rural English village, although it's within the kind of London commuter belt. Considering I live in London, it's a bit funny that so many of these English novels I've picked up are about the countryside. Um, but this is about a young boy, Lanny, who goes missing, and we get perspectives from his mother, from his father, and their neighbour, who's a, an old man who, who's an artist and been teaching Lanny art. And what I loved about this book is that you get snippets of from all of the neighbours. Everybody lives in this village. We get a little bit of their conversations or we get some little bits of their thoughts. They've got some very strange neighbours who get very angry about people parking on the verge and things like that. Um, and that is very funny. And that does come through quite an abstract route because there is this character called Dead Papa Toothwort who is hovering around the village and overhears different bits of information and different pieces of conversation but it's those little snippets of conversation which are like the most English thing I can I can ever ever dream of. It's a beautiful lyrical novel with lots of poetic parts of it that there's lots of visceral descriptions of of nature um, and the countryside and the idea of art and beauty as well as of death and decay um, so it's it's very beautiful. It's probably quite an acquired taste, I will say, but I absolutely adored it. So those are my picks for some very English books. I would love to hear from you if you have any others that you would add to this list. What is a book that you would recommend alongside a crumpet and some, or a scone and jam or something like that? Something to read with your afternoon tea while watching The Great British Bake Off. Let me know also if you've read any of these. I'd love to know your opinions of them in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.